there is often the need to perform certain database actions in response to a specific event occurring, like when a row is added to a table. In most database systems, including SQL Server, there is an ability to create triggers that fire when a given event occurs either at the database level or at the instance level. Hello everyone and welcome to this video by IntelliPath. In this video, we are going to learn about SQL Server triggers and how these can be used. Now before learning more about triggers, here is a look at the agenda of this video. Firstly, what are triggers? Then we talk about when do we use triggers. Then we are going to look at the syntax of a trigger. Then we are going to deal with an example of a trigger. And then let's look at operations and triggers and what are the types of SQL Server triggers. And after that, we'll talk about before insert and after insert and we'll look at the advantages and disadvantages of triggers and with that, we'll conclude. But before we begin, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell icon so you never miss any updates from us. Let us begin by understanding what are triggers. The SQL codes known as triggers are run automatically in response to specific events on a given table. These are employed to keep the data's integrity. A trigger in SQL functions similarly to a trigger in the real world. For instance, a bullet is shot when the gun trigger is pulled. We all understand this, but how does it relate to SQL triggers? Let us take a hypothetical scenario to better comprehend this. John works as the company's marketing representative. Each time a customer's information is added to the company's database, he must send them a welcome message. John can do it manually if there are only one or two customers. But what if there are more than a thousand? Well, in this situation, triggers are useful. As a result, John can now easily design a trigger that as soon as new customer's data is loaded into the database, immediately sends them a welcome message. When do we use triggers? When we need to carry out specific actions automatically in particular desirable conditions, triggers will be useful. For instance, we need to be aware of the frequency and timing of updates to a table that is continually changing. In such cases, we may design a trigger to insert the required data into a different table if the primary table underwent any changes. Let us look at the syntax. So let me break this syntax down for you. Create trigger. These two keywords are used to specify that a trigger block is going to be declared. Trigger name. It gives the trigger's name. The trigger name must be original and should not be repeated. Before after. This details the trigger's execution time. It reveals the moment the trigger is set off, either before or after the current event. Prior to record values being saved to the database, triggers are utilized to update or validate them. After triggers are used to modify other records and access field values that the system has set. The after trigger records have read-only access because it will result in a read-only error. We cannot change a record using the after trigger. Insert, update and delete. These are the DML operations and each one of them can be used in a specific trigger. Table name. The name of the table that the trigger is being applied to must be stated. Don't forget to use a keyword and confirm the database contained for the chosen table. For each row, for each column. A row level trigger is activated either before or after a row's column values change. The selected column changes either before or after the execution of the column level trigger. Trigger body. It is made up of queries that must be run when the trigger is invoked. Let us look at an example of a trigger. So as soon as the student's information is updated in the database, the trigger below attempts to calculate the percentage of a student. The row that is affected in this case is referred to by the new keyword. Operations and triggers. Triggers allow us to carry out a wide variety of tasks. Some may be straightforward while others may be a little more complicated. But as we read the question through, it becomes clear. Drop a trigger. The syntax for this is drop, trigger and the trigger name. Display a trigger. The code shown below will list every trigger that is active, which is show triggers. And the code listed below will list every trigger that is present in a specific database, which is show triggers in the name of the database. Types of SQL Server triggers. There are three basic types of triggers in SQL Server and they are as follows. Data Definition Language or DDL Triggers 
DDL events such as create, alter and drop statements cause DDL triggers to be fired. Depending on the DDL events, we can construct these triggers at the database or server level. Additionally, certain system-defined stored procedures that perform DDL, like activities, may trigger this execution. The following scenario calls for the use of DDL triggers. Whenever it is necessary to stop the database schema from altering. When it's necessary to check for database schema changes. When we must react to a modification made to the database schema. Next we have DML triggers or data manipulation language triggers. DML events like insert, update and delete statements in the user's table or view cause DML triggers to activate. Additionally, system-defined stored procedures may perform DML like activities in response to it. Two categories can be used to classify DML triggers, which are after triggers instead of triggers. Lastly, we have logon triggers. Fires caused by logon events are known as logon triggers. When a user session is created with a SQL Server instance after the authentication procedure of logging is finished, but before establishing a user session, the logon event takes place. As a result, the print statement messages and any errors generated by the trigger will all be visible in the SQL Server error log. Authentication errors prevent logon triggers from being used. These triggers can be used to track login activity or set a restriction on the number of sessions that a given login can have in order to audit and manage server sessions. Next we have before insert and after insert. As we have already learned how to design triggers, let us now examine the before insert and after insert trigger versions. Let's make a student table with several columns in order to put them to practice. So here is the student table. Now if we run this query, we get the table that is shown here. Let us try using the before insert which is the first variant. Here the trigger will be activated when data is automatically inserted into the student table. The trigger will add 100 into the student's marks column. Using the second variant after insert, for this variant to work, we need an additional table called percentage where the trigger's output will be kept. To build the percentage table, the code is displayed. And after using the insert trigger, we see that we insert data into the table. Total mark trigger will store the result in the final mark table. Alright, now that you are familiar with the operation of triggers, let us examine its advantages and drawbacks. Starting with advantages, imposing security approval on database tables that are currently present. Triggers offer an additional method for verifying the accuracy of data. Preventing fraudulent exchanges. Triggers deal with database layer failures. And lastly, triggers are typically useful for examining changes to data in tables. Now let us take a look at the disadvantages. Triggers are only able to offer extended validations, not all kinds. Use the not null, unique, check and foreign key constraints for basic validations. Triggers may raise the database's overhead. Triggers execute automatically in the database, which may not be invisible to client apps, making troubleshooting them challenging. Therefore, using triggers to conduct validation and checks before any operations is a great idea. One should be aware of how many rows the trigger will affect because this could result in unanticipated overhead. With that, the topic of triggers in SQL comes to an end. Thank you for watching. Just a quick info guys, Intellipad provides Microsoft SQL certification training in partnership with Microsoft. The course link of which is given in the description below.